Hi, I'm Bill Wilt of Assured Research. Thanks so much for uh, for joining into this. Uh, well, it'll be a short uh, video covering our uh, recently released Assured report on the year to date uh, through September 30th, 2023 financial results for a cohort of, of publicly traded property casualty insurance companies, which generally serve as a, a fairly good barometer for what's happening in the property casualty insurance world. As I said, this is uh, from an Assured report. If you're a subscriber, you'll have access to it and thank you. Um, if you're not a subscriber, uh, we hope you, you know, find some value in this uh, in this summary of the report, and uh, we'd be happy to put you on a trial to our work. So please feel free to feel free to reach out for uh, to us uh, after viewing this video. So if you bear with me, let me just jump over to the presentation, and we will get right into it. There we go. Get back to the beginning here and put it maximize the view there that should work good so title of the report as you see year-to-date uh, financial trends uh, but also uh, commenting that reinsurers have have really enjoyed a nice year of uh, positive earnings revisions and everybody else not so much but let's uh, uh let's get into it uh, with a focus on what we've learned year to date, the financial trends, and particularly uh, since it's just now concluded, we're recording this in uh, mid-ish November, um, what we just learned from the third quarter, uh, third quarter earnings season. What we learned is there in the middle in the bold highlights, and it's gonna be the focus with additional research, of course, uh, the focus of a, a research note to be released in our, with our, uh, excuse me, our December assured briefing. We're going to focus on commercial auto, which is still still biting and and showing signs of uh, of weak underwriting results and some poor uh, some adverse reserve development. Personal auto, which is maybe somewhat the opposite and showing signs of, of stabilizing, especially the driving ecosystem. We've got some some nice uh, proprietary data to uh, to focus on there. Workers' compensation was was, uh, was a focus for us, in particular, in our September and October assured briefings. Um, we painted a a let's call it a mildly bearish uh, view of uh, outlook for workers' comp. Let's level set here bearish, albeit from a really good financial place uh, over the past several years uh, for workers' compensation in terms of underwriting underwriting results. So. Point being, we think things are more likely to get incrementally harder than incre incrementally worse than incrementally better. Um, and there was some, perhaps some evidence of that coming out of the third quarter earnings season. Um, reinsurance, interesting divergent views uh, expressed by some of the uh, top executives in the industry on whether it's a, uh, a strategic choice or a tactical choice. Um, I suppose some would argue the, would argue both, but um, we'll, we'll focus on that with an eye toward a catastrophe volatility and how that's being pushed from reinsurers onto insurers, insurers back onto uh, both personal and commercial policyholders. And um, medical trends uh, has been a, a, a topic du jour for, we think, very good reasons. And um, we're going to have uh, more to say on that in our December briefing. So that's what we uh, are going to focus on. But as to understanding what others, how others uh, perceived uh, both the quarter and what's been learned during the year with an eye toward how what we've recently learned affects views on earnings in 2024 and 2025 in particular, um, you, we can do what we've done here in these two graphs. On the left-hand side, we have underlined this as a cohort of some uh, 30 property casualty, uh, publicly traded property casualty insurers. And what we've done on the left-hand side, broken them up into personal, commercial, specialty, and reinsurers. And we just look to see how uh, the consensus estimates, the median consensus, consensus estimates for these cohorts of companies have changed from the beginning of the year through uh, mid, call it mid November. So now we're looking at, kind of, periods of uh, bouts of information coming out with first quarter, second quarter, and third quarter results, plus, of course, everything in between, and how that's impacted analysts' views of 24 and 2025 earnings. 
let's ignore 2023 because that's going to go up and down with actual results as those are reported. Um, and if you do that, you look at the changes for the red bars 2024, black bar 2025. For personal, commercial, and specialty insurers, you might say, gee, you know, over the viewed over the course of the full year, um, you know, the information content has led to, you know, flattish to slightly down earnings revisions. Um, certainly nothing to get excited about with the exception of the reinsurers. And you look there, we see the blue bar there does show that they haven't had material cats uh, this year. We, we all, I think, know at this point that most of the cat activity, and there has been a lot of it, has been um, uh, some you know, so-called secondary perils, but but it's happened at a level, uh, it's kind of happened below the attachment point for most property uh, cat treaties. So it's been pushed on to insurers, reinsurers haven't had material catastrophes and i think the growing conviction that insure reinsurers have successfully pushed down a lot of that cat volatility is why you see the 24 estimates in particular and even 25 um, being revised higher perhaps by 2025 analysts are kind of sort of expecting that uh, that uh, some of the reinsurance hard market will be over um, and there might be you know more equal sharing don't know. I'm not going to speculate, but in any event, clearly favorable earnings revisions. On the right-hand side here, we, we, same idea, but let's uh, let's just ask ourselves what what did uh, what did analysts learn during the third quarter? Here we're measuring the change in 24 and 25 earnings estimates just from October 1st through mid-November which is would coincide with the third quarter earnings season. And here the good news is across the different subsectors we've uh, focused on here, um, the information flow has been positive. It's you know, generally speaking, positive earnings revisions, rate increases still in excess of loss cost trends. Um, loss cost trends and inflation seem to be maybe moderating some, you know, or, question mark I'd, I'd add on on medical but in a lot of other areas especially in supply chain issues feels like inflation is is becoming less of a, uh, less of a bad guy um, for instance those and, and for other reasons discipline in the marketplace etc positive earnings revisions good news for property casualty insurers uh, pro professionals and investors uh, both um, let's now look at this is some of the graphs that are in our in our report. I'll do this quickly, but I think you uh, many of you will will be able to absorb the information at, at, a, at a good pace. Left hand side, the underlying combined ratios, the median across this uh, cohort, median and then uh, with variability uh, around the median uh, for this cohort of uh, pro uh, property casualty companies. Uh, Excluding cats and prior period development, the underlying combined ratio has been in the low 90s for, for the past few years. It seems to be staying there. On the right-hand side, my takeaway from this graph, the biggest one, is the, the median cats, volatile, of course, but kind of sort of around 5% of premiums seems to be a pretty good average, uh, at least over the last, uh, the last decade or more. Prior period development is a point of interest. Actually, it's on the next page left hand side that's been about two to two and a half points of premium uh for the last uh, quite a long time now um decade or more notable that it ticked down if you look at the right uh, right hand side of the graph on the left you see that uh, really have only had moderately fit modestly favorable prior period development uh, year to date 2023 um Adverse development in private passenger auto and some lessening of favorable workers' comp development are at least two of uh, perhaps a few um, culprits for that uh, uh, for that decline in favorable prior period development. That's putting it all together on the right hand side. Paid to incurred ratio, which I know a lot of uh, a lot of analysts track, is still below the long term average of 93, but it's uh, but it ticked a bit higher uh, in the uh, uh, the year to date, 2023. I'm not covering all of these slides, given I uh, want to keep this video short, but um, uh, I can share here the gearing ratios, uh, kind of a Dupont analysis of of the typical property casualty company. Again, using medians uh, can um, uh, can 
obfuscate, I guess, some of you know some some interesting or obscure some interesting information. Uh, but it, it does allow us to just take a step back and say, okay, what's the uh, how's the industry broadly doing? Well, on the left hand side, you'd say, geez, over the last uh, five years or so, they're kind of geared to produce a twelve-ish percent called low double-digit ROE, but when you move in, in, to the right-hand side here and just look at year-to-date 2023, you see that you see general improvement. You see better underwriting margins, higher leverage, um, uh, and uh, more like a, a solid 15-ish percent uh, return on equity uh, as you know, that that which could be produced by the typical uh, insurer. Um, and that actually squares fairly nicely with the uh, anticipated, if you look at the right-hand side here, 2024, 2025, anticipated median return on equity across. Now, there's a slightly different uh, cohort here, a lot of the same companies, but just maybe slight slight differences. They um, Analysts are broadly expecting, if you draw your, your eyes across, a 16 percent ROE for the industry in 2024 and 2025 um, that would be a 12 point spread over uh, over the 10-year Treasury and that gets you back to uh, the the really the peak uh, hard market uh, earnings years in 2026 or excuse me 2006 and 2007 where as memory serves um, the the cat uh, catastrophes were particularly light after the very heavy 04 and 05 years um, so that would be a great uh, a great result uh, for the industry broadly speaking clearly some companies will do better some companies will do worse um, uh, in our work we've been uh, kind of come around to saying that we think that the the hard market is is starting to transition to um, probably use the descriptor hard less we think in 2024 and maybe you'll, you'll hear more of uh, um, disciplined uh, for instance it being a disciplined uh, market um, and uh, in the end uh, we think that that's probably uh, in the medium and longer term interests of all stakeholders if it's a, uh, a disciplined market going forward because um, the industry is doing quite well and um, and that serves uh, everyone's interest. So listen, uh, thank you for uh, signing into this. I hope you found some value in it. We will certainly uh, keep producing uh, our research and um, hope that uh, for those of you who aren't receiving that, that you will uh, reach out. As I said, we'd be happy to put you on trial. Thanks so much. Have a great rest of your day.